Hey guys, my name is Garrett Hartle. Welcome to Reach Out Reptiles. And today is Friday, which means it's time for your free tip. Now I'm running a little bit behind on some other business stuff today, so I don't have a ton of time for a free tip, but I figured I'd give you something short and sweet. I was just checking out this beautiful snow golden chow. That's a dwarf and super dwarf genetic annery purple albino golden chow. She's only one of a few in the world, and she's the first of her kind ever sold. This is a big ticket item, and I know there are a lot of people that have uh, no faith in kind of like the markets with snakes and stuff like that. But then there's a lot of other people who are very excited about making big investments. I think, uh, you know, as with most things in life, a little balance is probably the most appropriate. So I just wanted to talk to you real quickly about how to make wise investments buying higher end animals, but not lose your shirt. I want you guys staying clothed and classy. So let's head on in and I'll show you what I mean. All right, guys, let's get into this. Now, this is a much bigger topic than we can do in a little free tip Friday. Um, this is something that I actually dig in and do business development and stuff with people. And we work sometimes for a very long time to come up with the exact right strategy. But there's something that a lot of beginners do that I notice. And I want to try to help you develop a proper perspective so you don't get in over your head. The biggest thing that you want to do when you're investing is start with animals that you love, that you have a passion for. Don't buy into something just because it's the next hot thing. And the other thing that you want to do is make sure that you take on responsibility at the level that you're able to handle it as you grow and experience over the years. So you want organic growth, not just an artificial big dump into things. Otherwise, you end up with a bunch of overhead and a bunch of debt that just sucks all the fun out of what you're doing. So do it wisely and you can actually have a ton of fun while you're able to make a little bit of money. I mean, I think most people's goal is just to have their hobby cover it for itself. This is a phased approach dealing with how much money you should invest at each phase. Now, everybody's different based on how much financial resources they have available to them. But the theories in these phases are the same. The dollar amount might be different, but that just depends on where you're at. Phase one is buy some toys. It's basically you're gonna invest in reptiles at the same rate or to the same amount than you would in your regular toys. Check this out. Okay, phase one is easy. It's kind of automatic and it's where most people start getting into a hobby kind of. Um, you're basically buying a toy, meaning you're taking money from your regular nine to five job and putting it into snakes. Because in this phase, you want to be able to say, even if I never made any money doing anything, all I did was buy myself some nice toys and I'm happy with that. I can appreciate the animals I got and enjoy keeping them for the pure pleasure of it. Phase two is gonna be reinvest and there's a key difference between these two. Let me explain to you exactly what that is. Okay, now phase two is where it really starts to get fun. In this phase, you've taken the foundation of animals that you picked up in phase one and you've actually taken those little super dwarfs and rubbed them together or whatever species you're working with and made some babies. Now you sell them one way or another and you convert them over to money. By the way, I recommend just like you pick up animals that you like doing, make sure you sell animals in a way that makes you feel good as well. Find them good homes. Remember that these are living creatures. That's gonna be a foundational understanding for you moving forward. But in phase two, you now have a new kind of money. I always jokingly call it monopoly money because it doesn't matter. You can make it rain. And what you wanna do in this phase, let's say you get whether it's $100 or $10,000, that money does not have as much of a financial impact on you because it didn't come from your regular job. And so what you wanna do is go ahead and invest that into new snakes. And it is a lot of fun because you can make decisions that would otherwise be irresponsible if you were you know, taking money from other places. Okay, so if you're still in phase one, your goal should be to execute the follow through of your plan to get to phase two. Make those snakes make more snakes and turn those snakes into money. This is gonna give you a huge educational background for what comes next. 
Phase two actually grows organically, and really sometimes there's no reason to ever go past phase two. You make money, you reinvest it, you make more money, you reinvest it, and you continue to allow that to grow, but you're gonna need the hands-on experience from phase one and two before you ever consider phase three. Okay, phase three is leveraging other people's money. Okay, what we're talking about here is taking on debt or a loan in order to really reach out and accomplish what your dreams are in investing with reptile breeding. But you gotta be careful, let me explain why. All right, now phase three is an absolute dream for a lot of people, it's something they've thought about getting to ever since they were a kid. And what separates phase three from phase two is that you are no longer using your money from your job and you are trying to jump out, hi baby, in faith beyond where your organic growth can take you. Phase three is leveraging other people's money. Now this might be credit card debt. It could be a home equity line of credit. Maybe you get together a business plan and you get a couple of investors backing you up in it so that you can leverage their money and show them the skills that you've acquired in phases one and two so that you and they can both invest their money wisely into your future with these snakes. Uh, but this is not a step that could be taken, that should be taken lightly. And that's the problem most people have. They jump right into phase three, banking on the fact that they're gonna somehow figure out how to run a snake business along the way. And then if it all falls through, they'll blame the market, they'll blame uh, other breeders, they blame all kinds of things, which um, it, you know is tempting information to listen to because we do wanna learn from other people's mistakes. But at the same time, I'm sure you've seen people who are successful in every segment where other people are saying that there isn't any money to be made. So, <laughs> hi, <honey. clears throat> basically in phase three, don't get there before you have a foundation. Yeah, I love you very much too. Yes, you're very cool. I like you. This guy, by the way, is one of my uh, yearling female Superdorf Mochino Poshet Snows. Um, there's only three Superdorf Mochinos in the world so far, and they're all right here. And this is definitely a phase three animal. I mean, this is one of those big ticket items, but it's also the kind of animal, you can't have her by the way, she's not for sale, she's for me, but it's the kind of animal that I'm banking on pushing me and taking me to the next level. I can't wait to see what this girl produces. Uh, an absolute you know, pleasure of an animal for sure, and a dream for a lot of people to get there, which I think is why it's so tempting to just jump in, even if it includes taking on a bunch of debt. Um, but I don't think that's the wisest way. I mean, that's the way you lose your shirt. Now guys, this is my advice to you from my experience uh, working with reptiles and people who work with reptiles over the years. But I also wanna know what you think. What are some ways that you think would be a wise investment and some foolish investments at this point? Now this can be a little bit controversial, so I'm gonna ask you please comment below. Let's start the discussion and be able to learn from each other, but let's do it in a civil way that's not tearing other people down and stuff. We're all at a different level and learning as we continue to climb forward. And that's what this is all about, these Free Tip Fridays, guys, so that we can learn together. I can learn from you, you can learn from me. But until then, you guys have a great weekend.